Welcome to the podcast. Today we're on episode 59 and we're talking about consulting margins. It's kind of a fun topic. It sounds a little uh, finance related, but I'm excited to share with you this new idea of looking at margins that you might not have considered. So I can't wait to share with you today this concept. But in the meantime, if you haven't yet taken the consulting business growth assessment, go grab that. It's incredibly, I've been getting so much feedback that it's incredibly insightful. It's a list of around 26 questions that help you to assess the health of your business and how strong it is, uh, how strong your business is set up from a growth perspective. And so if you go out to uh, IC, the letters IC for independent consultant, icbizeval.com, you can go grab that assessment, go through, figure out the health of your business as it relates to the four pillars for growth. And it will give you a results page that gives you that really helps you to prioritize what to work on next and the resources that you can use to uh, leverage to work on those areas of your to improve your business. So go grab that. And and now let's dive into today's topic, which is consulting margins. So the reason why I wanted to bring this up with you today and share this concept with you is I was talking with my fractional CFO a few months ago in our monthly meeting, and he was, you know, really, really just resetting, right? It's the beginning of the year when we were meeting, really resetting on, you know, what, what uh, my goals were for the year, what's, uh, the financial goals, but then also we started talking about, you know, after we got through all those financial goals, we started talking about a concept he brought up, which is life margin. So we were talking about my business margin, right? What are, what is, what is, if we take my revenue and deduct all the, of the expenses, then what is that? and we are left with the profit, what is the margin, right? We're all, I think, familiar with that concept of financial margin. But then my fractional CFO started asking me about my life margin. I was like, what are you talking about? (laughs) I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Um, And so he just started telling me about this concept that I want to share with you today, which is thinking about not only your business margin, which is your, you know, the percentage of of revenue that you're making, you know, the the income versus your revenue, but then also thinking about your life margin. How much do you have left over after you're delivering for your clients? How much do you have left over for your life? And where are the areas of opportunity within your business to increase your life margin? And so it just really got me to thinking what a what a uh, powerful concept this is. We focus so much on the numbers so oftentimes, right? What is our what is our takeaway from our business? Uh, it doesn't make sense to invest in something and potentially reduce the margin in order to create more capacity. Um, you know, we think about all of these things from a, from a business owner perspective, but it's very rare to think about it from a life margin perspective. And so that's the concept that I want to share with you today so that you can start thinking about this for yourself and your own business. So today, that's our focus. We're going to talk about consulting life margin. I'm going to explain to you in more detail what that is, your consulting life margin. And then I'm going to talk to you about how to align your business model to your life margin goals. And then, fi- and then finally, I'll give you a case study so we can, I can just show you how this all comes together and you can put it in place. So that is our agenda for today. Let's dive in first. The first topic of the agenda is what is consulting life margin? Consulting life margin is essentially what do you want your overall life to look like? So once you're finished with work, like what's left over uh, is, is one way to look at it. Or the opposite way to look at that is this is what I want my life to look like. And therefore, this is what I have a, a, available to me from a work, from a business owner, from a from a delivery perspective. So think about from a life margin perspective. I think another great way to describe this to you is, you know, so oftentimes we're so good at fitting things in around our work. We learned this as employees, right? We learned we have a job. We have all these responsibilities, 
that are probably written down on our job description, plus a bunch more that aren't written down on the job description, and just an overall sense of what we have to do to keep that whole train running within the corporate ecosystem. So we become very good at juggling. We become very good at multitasking. We become very good, quite honestly, at kind of pretending that, you know, we're that we're present in our home life when really we're thinking about work or responding to an email quickly on our phone or whatever it is. And so that's where we've built up these muscles. You've done this, right? I'm sure you've built up these muscles to that, that you use to survive and thrive as an employee. And so then it's so common as a consulting business owner and independent consultant to bring those same habits, those same skills, over into your business. And so then what ends up happening for you in your business, and that happens all the time with almost every client I work with, we look at what they're creating and it's essentially the same thing that they had, the same experience of life that they had when they were in corporate in so many ways, right? You've got all of this client work that you really take off the top of your availability of the 24 hours in the day or the 168 hours in the week. It's like, this is what I'm doing with my clients. And then what's left over for me to be able to, you know, spend time with my family or work on my business or do what I want to do from a personal perspective. And so it's the same kind of concept when you're approaching, you know, it's the same thing you did in corporate. It's like, whatever's left over, I'm just going to make the most of it. But when you're thinking about this as a business owner, you don't have to recreate how you lived when you were in corporate. You don't have to just take what's left over and figure out how to allocate it in the best way possible. You can actually do the opposite. You can really figure out how you want to live and what that looks like, and then figure out how your business and your consulting work fits into that. So for you, the first thing about really looking at consulting life margin is to think about this the opposite way. We're not thinking about what's left over after we quote unquote do our job and what we want our life to look like when that with the remainders. Really, we want to look at it the opposite way. What do we want our life to look like on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, on a yearly basis, thinking about it in all those different ways. And then Then from there, designing our business model. It's the opposite of what you're probably used to from a corporate perspective. Most people are used to from a corporate perspective. So most likely that's you too, right? So I'll give you an example. I had a client we first started off and uh, really trying to figure out she was starting to get burned out. She was starting to worry that, you know, that the business was almost like taking a life of its own. And so we really took a step back and said, okay, what is... What is your goal here from a working perspective? How many hours do you want to work each week? What does that look like on a daily basis? What does that look like over the course of the year? And we really built out starting from starting from that end goal, the life margin. What did she want that to look like? For this particular client, and I have several that are similar to this, where, where the goal is to take off the last six to eight weeks of the year, not work in in, uh, November or December, and also not work on Fridays, and also only work, you know, keep it to eight-ish hours a day, six to eight hours a day of delivery work, and then six to eight hours of of working on their business, either, you know, either on a little bit every day or in some cases, and in some cases, a chunk on Fridays. Those are some examples for you of what this might look like when you start thinking about looking at the way you want to live your life and and deciding that first and then figuring out how you're going to design your business around that versus taking the job approach, you know, our employee approach, which is I landed this job. Now let me figure out how my life fits in around the edges. So that's really what the consulting life margin is, is you thinking about how am I going, how do I want to live my life overall? What do I want my schedule to look like? What do I want my time off to look like? How am I most effective? How am I most effective? Is it working 12 hours, 15 hours a day, or is it having space? having space to be able to think more strategically. Think about all of this as you think about that first step, which is really figuring out what your life margin, what you want your life to look like and getting very clear picture on that. 
because you have full control over all of it now. You don't have to take what your employer gave you and then figure out how to fit around, around the process, right? So once you really have clarity on what you want your life to look like, then you've got to align your business model to that. So what that means is really thinking about what is your business model? Is it, I want to take on, you know, some of you have, you you might have a client where you just are working with them almost as an extension of their team. Is that what it does that business model map to your, the goals that you have for your life margin? It might, or it might not, or you might need to make some adjustments. You might also be in a situation where you're, you know, you're, um, tr- you've got these long-term multi-year engagements and it's not fitting back to that, that design you just created with me here in the first step, right? The life margin. So ask yourself, how does my business model align to the goals that I've got for the life that I want to live? And then all, how do I, how might I need to adjust what I'm doing in order to fit in with that vision for how I want to live my life? So it might be Starting over with a blank sheet of paper, some clients, I've, that's what we've done. Other times it might be just making some tweaks to what it is you're offering or cutting down engagements into multiple phases in order to have more control over what that delivery looks like. So for example, it might look like once you know what that life goal looks like, what kind of life margin you want to create for yourself then you can think about, okay, this, I, it may make sense to make shorter engagements where I'm not booking myself out for a year or two at a time and therefore putting myself into a situation where I can't take time, you know, six or eight weeks off at the end of the year, if that's your goal, or maybe you have a goal of once a week, every, you know, taking a once a week off every quarter, whatever your goals are, right? Think about how the way you've structured your engagements matches back to what those goals are and what do you need to adjust. Also, you might want to think about bringing on subcontractors to do some of the heavy lifting or the quote unquote grunt work. A lot of us resist that. We're so this the the topic of this podcast is grow your independent consulting business. The word independent, right? But but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have subcontractors where you are bringing them in to do some of the heavier lifting and giving yourself that mar- you, that life margin in that way. It's not as complicated or, um, or it doesn't have to be as complicated or, uh, or uh, you know, management heavy as you might be imagining. A lot of us are like, I've managed people in corporate. I don't want to manage people again. It doesn't have to be that way if you set it up, the, you know, set it up to align to your goals. It might mean to create more life margin that you bring on an assistant, some kind of a virtual assistant we've talked about on, or an executive assistant, like we've talked about in previous episodes. Or it might be, it might also mean that you're setting up client expectations really clearly with them. You're one of my clients. I'm all in on you getting the goals we've talked about and the outcomes we've discussed. And I do that in two days of the week. I have other you know, I'm running a business and I'm, I've got your multiple clients and uh, which benefits you because you get the, the uh, benefit of other examples and, across the industry and that kind of thing. But I'm not here 24 seven as an employee would be. That's the type of thing that you're setting with those clients, right? I think a lot of times you've got to set that with yourself first. I, so many times I start working with my own clients, consulting business owner clients, and they haven't even set the own expectations about what their availability is. You might be in the same bucket too. You're kind of in this employee zone of, I need to just be available at all times, respond immediately, because that's what I did when I was in corporate. And that's the key to success. But that is not the key to success as a business owner, especially one who's focused on creating a balance of of financial margin and life margin. So you know, going back to an exa- a client example here, we re- as we were looking at for that one particular client that I described to you earlier, where she wanted to take off the last couple of months of the year and also wanted to work four days a week, eight-ish hours a day, the, sh- the answer here was I need to break up my engagements into multiple phases. They're shorter, more focused on strategy, 
uh, not as heavy on delivery so that those engagements can fit into the window and I can wrap them up, you know, and take some time off without just taking a pause on a project and coming back. So you can see how that could work when you create these shorter strategy type engagements, for example, to give you more room if that's your goal to take some big chunks of time off. Just as an example, to help you create some uh, uh, visual around what I'm describing to you. So that's the second piece of this is really aligning your business model to the life margin, not the opposite way around. And so then what I often get is the, but Melissa, I love this part, right? So, but Melissa, the con, you know, my clients won't want this or, but Melissa, this isn't how my clients that my type of clients want to work with me or, but Melissa, this isn't, this doesn't apply to me because of X, Y, or Z. I'm going to have to do what my client tells me to do. I'm going to say two things to you about this. Number one, you might be right. Your client might expect you to essentially be working more of an employee type of a, a schedule where you're not creating as much life margin as you want to be. You could be right. What that means is that your goals and your business model are misaligned. So if you've got goals from a life margin perspective, which you may not have even really thought about in this way until today, got to get clear on what those goals are first and then figure out how your business model can be aligned to them. And if they're misaligned, then you've got to figure out you either change your goals, which you have the power to do, you're not being forced to do it, or and or you change your business model in some way. So with the but Melissa, this won't work for me. That's you might be right. And that's the that's the strategy to take if you are right. But most of the time, what I find is that you're not right. When you say my clients won't want this, or this isn't how my clients want to work with me, a lot of times that's an excuse your brain is creating with all the evidence that it searches for, for you to keep the status quo, because as a human being, your brain is designed to, to maintain the status quo, even if it's not in your best interest, because it's familiar. So you've got to really figure out, are you right and therefore need to realign your goals with your business model? Or are you making excuses for yourself that keep you in the status quo? Ask yourself that first. Exhaust all possibilities that what you're doing cannot be done in the way you want to be doing it before you end up changing your business model, unless you just want to change your business model. So when you, to exhaust these excuses, you're, what you need to do is really think about where are you making assumptions about what the client wants when you haven't actually had that conversation? Where are you making, where are you really people pleasing in order to avoid challenging conversations and potential rejection? Where are you just operating on autopilot like you did as an employee without even thinking about what, how could I do this differently? Where are you asking yourself, where are you not asking yourself high quality questions? So for example, how could I make this work? This being the schedule that you want to create, the business model that you want to create, the type of, of engagements and the way you're delivering those engagements. How could you make that work for both you and your clients? Ask yourself, how could you structure your process so that you're setting those expectations up front? And it's not some kind of surprise at the end. How could I infuse throughout my process from first conversation or even before that? How could I infuse the way I do business into my business development process to make it a, a, a non-issue when you get to contracts and delivery? Ask yourself, how could what the way you want to do business and the flexibility and the life margin you want to create for yourself, how could that benefit both your clients and you versus it being kind of more seen more as like a hard pill to swallow? Well, the client's just going to have to deal with this that I'm not available to them all the time. Instead, ask yourself, how could this benefit them? Also ask yourself, how could you be thinking about yourself differently in the way that you, in, in the way you deliver your work? In the way you think about yourself, are you someone who's highly sought out? Do you think of yourself as someone who's highly sought after and who is in demand and has a very scarce amount of exclusive time to be able to devote to clients that you really are vetting through? 
or do you think about yourself as someone who's more desperate and will, you know, ha- has to kind of bend to whatever the client wants? You've got to be thinking about yourself in a different way first before other people will see you in that way, before other potential clients will see you in that way. When you think about yourself as highly sought after and exclusive versus desperate, it shifts everything in the way that you see yourself first and then how other people see you and interact with you. You've got to go first. So these are the types of questions that you need to ask yourself in order to figure out if you are making an excuse to keep the status quo and therefore uh, suppressing your life margin, or if there's real opportunity here for you to be able to shift the way that you're doing business and therefore increasing your life margin. And after you've exhausted all of that, there then potentially there's some opportunity that there is that you're right, that your clients won't want this and that you there needs to be more alignment between your life goals, your business goals, and your business model. So to wrap this up, I will share with you just end to ends a case study of another client we did where we did this work together. And so what we did first is we, and so this is what I would recommend that you do. So first we looked at what their business vision is in the next five, three to five years. Where do they want to be? Their goal, their business vision and their goal. What does it look like? What do you want to be doing? How do you want to be operating with your clients? What kind of money do you want to be making? What are what, what does your life look like? So we got that really clear target and vision on what it is that they wanted to be doing. And then we drilled that down into a 12-month capacity plan. So we knew exactly, again, we're not starting with, we're starting with the capacity plan. How much do I want to be working? What are the weeks that I want to be taking off? And starting with that, instead of starting with, what kind of work do I need to be doing and what's left over for my life? You see the difference. So we created that capacity plan and then we started putting in placeholders for, you know, we put in real clients to see where that drew down against the capacity and how much capacity was left. And then we had, we realized there were some misalignments between their the way that they were selling their work and their goal for the way they wanted to live their life and that life margin. And so we made some adjustments to their service offerings, which really, which, which means for, in this case, we shortened the length of the engagements. We made them much more focused on strategy setting versus implementation and delivery. We created some offerings where the, where uh, the consultant was able to do an initial phase, which was the strategy setting. And then we created some follow-on offerings where they either equip the client to implement that strategy or where they were able to take on the, the, the actual implementation themselves, but using some team members to help do that heavy lifting. Um, and so that's the type of adjust, just to give you a very specific example, those are the types of adjustments we made to their service offerings so that one client wasn't taking up all of their capacity and they were essentially operating as a staff augmentation type of a resource anymore. We shifted it so that they were truly a consultant. We filled in some gaps with retainer type service offerings and that ultimately aligned their, um, you know, their service offerings and the way they were delivering to their capacity and overall life margin goals. So we've got an alignment of the financial margin, which ultimately, you know, results in how much income you're making. And we also aligned it to the life margin goals, which ultimately means how much time do you have to be living your life that isn't related to your business? And what does that look like? And creating that true balance creating whatever that means for you, right? And then finally, after we adjusted those service offerings, then we aligned their business development process, like I was describing earlier, where upfront we start messaging and creating creating expectations about what availability looks like when you work with an independent consultant. is different. You've got to teach and train and help set the expectation of how other people treat you versus ex- assuming that they know how to do that when they most likely have either never or rarely worked with an independent consultant before. They're used to managing people on a day-to-day basis. So you've got to align your entire business development process to your goals from a financial margin perspective, 
as well as a life margin perspective. So that's what I've got for you today in terms of life margin. I want to remind you two things. Go put this into practice with the steps that I gave you. And then also, don't forget that independent consultant business growth growth assessment that I, that I mentioned to you at the beginning of the episode. Go take that growth assessment, and it will help you to identify areas of opportunity for your business so that you can increase your revenue, increase your impact, and increase this life margin we were talking about today. So we'll put the link in the show notes, but uh, in short, it is IC, the letters IC for independent consultant, bizeval.com. And that's what where you'll be able to go take that uh, 26-ish question assessment, and it will give you very detailed results in the four key pillars of your consulting business so that you can prioritize what's going to be the biggest um, impact for you if you go and focus on it. All right. So that is what I have for you today. And I will see you again next week. Take care.